Welcome to our channel. We are Technic Force and we help grow your business online. Please hit the subscribe button to get more updates. Using Google Search Console Google Search Console is a free web service provided by Google that helps you monitor, maintain, and troubleshoot your website's presence in search results on Google. It provides several metrics and insights into your website's search performance and user experience to help you improve your site for more traffic. So now you know the answer to the question, what is Google Search Console? Are you ready to learn how to get started Google Search Console? Let's go dive into it. Search Google Search Console. Click the first one that appears. Click Start. This page will appear if you are new to Google Search Console or if you have not added any property type. If you have previously added any property type, however, you will see this page. If you have previously added any property type, you can simply click here to search them or click here to add a new one, where this select property type box will appear. You're going to need to verify that you're actually the owner of this website. So here, you're going to be able to use either the domain option or the URL prefix. Using the domain option allows you to track your entire site. We're going to be using the URL prefix because this is actually much easier to verify. It gives you more options and if you have already set up your Google Analytics account for this website using the same Google account, it's going to be easy to verify this. So we'll simply type in our URL here, click continue. When we do this, we're going to have a number of ways that we can go about verifying the site. So the first option that Google is going to give us is an HTML file. Now, as you can see, that's the first option here. And all we have to do is click to download the file and then upload it to the website. And then we'll come back here to verify. And we've proved we own the domain or at least have access to it through the website owner. Now, there are some other ways here and I want to go through a couple of these just so you can pay the one that seems the easiest to you. The next one is an HTML tag. And as you'll see here, they're going to give you the tag and what they want you to do is copy this tag and then they want you to paste it in the head section before the body section in the code. You can also click full details to know more about verifying site ownership. But you also have the option here if you sign in using the same Google Analytics account. So since I added this, I'm going to go ahead and click verify. So just go ahead and choose the option that is easiest to you. If you feel overwhelmed by any of this, if you need to get someone else to do it for you, it literally will take them a minute to log in and do it. So you can get this done very inexpensively. So here we are within one of our Google Search Console properties that we're going to use today for this beginner's tutorial. Now, when you first land on your Google Search Console property, you'll arrive at the overview page. Now, your overview is basically a breakdown of the performance of your website. This is a snapshot of the number of clicks that your website has received received over the last three months period. You can see that this website has received 1,530 total web search clicks over the last three month period. Now we're going to dive deeper into performance under the performance tab. And then below this, we have indexing, experience, enhancements. Google Search Console also gives you Search Console insights if we navigate up here and click search console insights now this gives us insights into the performance of our website on google search in a simple and understandable format you can see the performance over the last 28 days for a specific search queries we can also click here and come down to most trending queries and down here you can see our top five queries that people are searching in order to find our website on google search we can also come down here and navigate across the top eight and on the right hand side next to the search queries you can see the number of clicks through to your website after people type in the specific keyword queries so for example 206 people typed in technic force and ended up clicking through to our website and you can see the average position on the first page of google which is 1.1 on average and ideally that's where we want to be we want to be in the top five results because the first page of google and the top three spots generate the most clicks what we're going to do is head back to our google search console overview and then navigate over to performance and under performance this is where we want to spend the majority of our time this is where we can understand the performance of our website okay so first we want to make sure that the search type web is selected because we want to measure the number of clicks that are coming from Google search the web. Then on your date range, 
You can select here and filter your date range based on the period that you want to measure. For us, we're going to leave the last three months selected. We can also come down and select a custom date range now with Google Search Console. What you can also do is click compare and compare the performance of your website on Google Search between two different periods. For example, I can compare the last three months to the previous period or I can select any of these comparisons or create a custom comparison down here and then select apply. And and up here, you can see the total number of clicks. We have 1.53k for the last three months and 1.32k for the previous three months. So this allows you to compare performance. But what we want to do is simply click date and navigate back over to filter. And we just want to measure the performance of our website on Google search for the last three months and then come down and click apply. So again, with all of these performance metrics that we're going to break down today, you can choose to compare between different periods to understand the performance and growth of your website, for example, year to year, month to month. So now what we want to do is cover these four metrics. Make sure you have the average CTR selected and average position selected. Down on the graph, you can see that over the last three month period, we've had 1.53k total clicks. This means that people have been searching for our business products products or services on Google search and have clicked on those pages 1.53k times over the last three month period. Then next to this, we have total impressions over the last three months. We've had 16.4k impressions. This means that over 16,000 people have basically scrolled past or seen our website page on Google search, but have not necessarily clicked through to our website page. Over here, you can see that 1.53k have actually clicked through to our website out of over 16,000 people. And this leads us to our average CTR click-through rate, which is 9.4%. And essentially, you want your click-through rate to be as high as possible because this means more people are clicking through to your website pages. Then next to average click-through rate, we have average position. This is the average position that your website pages appear on Google search. When people type in specific queries related to your business products or services. And then down here, you can analyze each day in terms of the total clicks, total impressions, average click through rate, and average position. Now, if we scroll down to the next section, this is where things get exciting. Down here, we have queries selected. These are search queries that people type in that are related to our business, products, or services. You can see our top search queries are Technic Force, Technic Force Malaysia, Technic Force Ventures, L LLC. Then on the right hand side, next to the search queries or keywords, you can see the important metrics that we covered earlier. So by looking at our search queries, we can see that Technic Force is our number one search query that people are trying in to find our website. You can see over the last three months, we've had 669 clicks through to our website pages. We've had 1,572 impressions and a high click-through rate of 42.6%. And the average position that we appear for on the first page of Google is 1, meaning we're in the top positions on the first page of Google when someone types in this keyword into Google search. Then we can also navigate over to pages to see the top pages that people are clicking through. Then we have countries, and here you can see that the majority of our clicks are coming from Malaysia. So people within Malaysia that are typing in keywords that are related to our products or services, then we can navigate over to devices. And here you can see our top device is desktop, mobile, and tablet. So what this would show us is we want to optimize our website for desktop search as the majority of our clicks are coming from desktop. Now the majority of your time is going to spend on their queries so if we select queries, this is where we can identify top search queries that we want to rank higher for. Under search appearance, this will tell us how we are actually appearing. Are we appearing in search? Do we have videos? Do we have any rich results like FAQs or recipes or reviews or site links or any of that that is appearing? This can give us some good information on that as well. Now we can also navigate over to filter over here and we can filter these queries by top query clicks impressions, the average CTR, or average position. If there's a page that you think that you should be ranking for, what you want to do is use the URL inspector tool. And this is going to let you know if there's any issues or errors with that page that are preventing it from coming up. So let's take a look at that tool. 
There are three ways that you can use the URL inspector tool. The first is by clicking up here at the top search box. That will allow you to do that. The second is by clicking on this URL inspection navigation bar here on the left. And anytime that you are in a report and you see a list of pages, if you hover over that page on the right, here you will see a search icon. Clicking that will automatically start an inspect URL. So if we click on this, it's going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see here that we have three sections. The first is going to be our Google Presence card, and this is really going to tell us one of the three things that the URL is on Google. It's been indexed. It appears in search results. The second is that it does not appear on search results. And then the other one could be that, yes, it's been indexed, but there's some issues or errors that we need to look into and take care of. Here, the next section, we can see that the page has been indexed. And clicking through here, this is going to give us some more information. We'll show where it is in the sitemaps. The last time that it's been crawled, so looking at this, it's only been a number of hours and some additional information. Now, lastly, we have an enhancements and experience, but as you can see, it's all green. We have all check marks, so now we're good to go. Let's jump over to the indexing section. The indexing category here has four different sections. We have pages, video pages, sitemaps, and removals. So if we click into the pages here, this whole index reporting section, we're going to be able to see which of your pages have been crawled and indexed by Google. Here you will see not indexed. These URLs are not indexed by Google. In some cases, this may be your intent. In other cases, it might be an error. Examine the issue in the table below to decide whether you need to fix these URLs. And here you see indexed. These URLs are indexed by Google. However, they might have issues that should be fixed to improve their appearance on Google. And you will see 11 reasons why it's not indexed. We can look down here as to why pages are not indexed. And this is going to give us a list of all of the different issues. And that's going to tell us the actual pages that have these issues so that we can go and have them fixed. Next is the video indexing report. If you do not have any videos on your website, you're not going to see this report. So don't panic if you do not have this report. Here you're going to see the number of pages that have a video on them and which of these videos are going to be able to be indexed. This is good because not only is your page going to be indexed and be able to appear in search results, but the video itself that is on the page can be indexed and be shown within search results as well. In this report, you're going to see how many index pages on your site contain a video that Google has indexed and the details about that index video. And you're also going to see how many index pages on your site contain at least one video. But Google could not index any video and why not? So here we see that we have 45 videos that are actually indexed, but four of them are not indexed. And there's two issues for that. So we see the reasons here, video not found on host service, video outside the viewport. So when you click here, and we'll be able to see the URLs that contain the video in the specific URLs of the video. So let's say it's embedded from YouTube. In this case, we can go in, solve that issue there. Next up, we have the sitemap section. So a sitemap is a file that is going to tell Google what pages on your site that they should actually know about. Here you're going to add your URL and click submit now. Below this is going to show you a history of all of the previous sitemaps that have been submitted. Now this will show you the type of sitemap. You can see when it was submitted. Here you can see the one that they have most recently read. The status, you can see here it's error. You can see discovered pages and discovered videos. Next up, we have removals. If you need to temporarily block a page from Google search results for some reason, head to removals. You can hide a page for approximately 90 days before this wears off. If you want to permanently remove a page from Google's crawling, you'll have to do it on your actual website. Now we're moving right along to the experience section here. First, we start on the page experience. This whole section is really about how users experience your site. And these things are not only important for your visitors, but they're really important for SEO. So you want to make sure that you're passing here. So under the page experience, this is giving us a summary of the user experience of the visitors that are looking at your site. So it says here, no URLs with a good page experience on mobile. But we have 83.9% good URLs on desktop. So pages are evaluated separately for mobile and desktop. Now let's take a look down here. And here we see page experience signals for mobile. And as you can see, we have 
For the Core Web Vitals, we have 62 failing URLs. Mobile Usability, we have 5 failing URLs. HTTPS, it says good, your site uses HTTPS. Now let's click this failing URLs. So here we can see we have 0 poor issues but have 62 need improvement URLs and 1 issue. Down here we can see why URLs aren't considered good. URLs with these issues don't provide a good page experience. So next we have here mobile usability. So we have 5 not usable and we have 3 issues and on the right side we have 60 usable. So down here we can see why pages aren't usable on mobile. So here are the issues. We can see text too small to read, clickable elements too close together, or content wider than screen. So next we'll proceed to enhancements. So the first one is the breadcrumbs. Now according to Google, a breadcrumb just shows the position in the overall navigation, the hierarchy of a website, and it can help users understand where they are, how they got to, so you usually see the drill down from the homepage, down through categories and subcategories and so forth. So next we have security and manual actions, legacy tools and reports, links, where we can see external links, internal links, top linking sites, top linking text, etc. The links on their external links are all the backlinks that Google acknowledges to your site. The links report has two columns, external links and internal links. External links are the links from outside the website that points to the website. Internal links are links that originate within the website and link to somewhere else within the website. The external links column has three reports. First, top link pages. Second, top linking sites. And third, top linking text. The internal links report lists the top link pages. Each report, top link pages, top linking sites, etc has a link to more results that can be clicked to view and expand the report for each type. So how important are backlinks? Backlinks plays a crucial role in the search engine optimization process and increases your page rank with Google. It helps you get a higher ranking position, bring referral traffic to your page, and help Google find new pages. People should create good backlinks because wrong links can harm your search engine results rather than boosting your organic traffic and settings and feedback you can submit a feedback so to know more about search console just click about search console before we end this video start your ecom store in 10 minutes flat create your own high converting ecom store in just a few clicks and sell anything anywhere when hundreds of ready-made plug and play templates easy to use no code ecom store builder Dozens of payment gateways from around the world. Sell anywhere without restrictions. No profit sharing or charges per order. Create breathtaking sale pages for your products. Powerful analytics in built and a lot more. Shop Finals is all you need to set up your e-com store. So what are you waiting for? Get Shop Finals now. Just go to getshopfinals.in. I hope you find this video helpful and thanks for watching.